Commission for uh, Thursday, September 24th. Uh, standard opening statement, the commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and their duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment. During our meetings, however, we ask that the public limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today, there are no uh, hearings scheduled, um, but they, uh, uh, there are requests for certificates of uh, compliance. Uh, Turkey Hill Road, Prospect Woods, Woodburn Way, and Reservoir Road. Uh, there were no minutes, as I recall, Sarah. There were none, no. So, uh, We'll go first to, are there any uh, public comments before we start talking? Yes. Hi there. My name is Celeste Palladino. I'm a resident of 29 Landy Ave in Florence. Um, the property immediately adjacent to me, which is currently um, an older single family home has been sold. Uh, a developer intends to build three single family homes on it. Um, I'm not sure how much of this is under the purview of this committee. But one concern I have is that the significant tree ordinance does not seem to apply in the instance of a developer buying what is currently one lot and dividing it up into three. Um, there are currently 10 50 foot um, Norway spruces on the immediately bordering the property uh, habitat to cardinals, you know, woodpeckers, other birds. The developer has stated he intends to raise it. We have been informed that the significant tree ordinance does not apply. In addition, we have some questions how we would go about requesting a determination of applicability if the project is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. We feel like we're really unable to get answers. Um, as well, I'm just somewhat concerned, you know, trying to look through meeting minutes. I, I don't see any posted. Um, so those are our concerns. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That, uh, uh, as I understand it, Sarah, there was no application by the developer um, that they had consulted with a, uh, uh, a wetlands resource, wetlands consultant, and determined that um, uh, there was not a resource uh, area under our jurisdiction, so they did not make an application. But that I think, Sarah, you plan to go do a site visit anyway? Yeah, so anytime we get a, a report of a potential violation, I do a site visit, so I'll be doing that. Okay, any other Diane, Diane Scott, I lived across the street from the property um, that Celeste's property abuts, and I spoke to Sarah today, and thank you for that. Do you happen to have any idea when that will take place? I, I can plan around it. I, I mean, it is private property. Um, so Actually, I, if you come in from the medical center, you can, from the medical center parking lot, it's a short grassy area, and then that's... Um, that's I, 189 on Tuck Street, the woods behind it. Right. Yep, it's yep, Riverside. everywhere. I'm, I, I'll either get to it um, tomorrow if I get a chance. I did just get back from vacation, so I do have a lot of other things to do, or early next week. Okay, thank you. So in, in the next few days... Um, You're welcome and, to enter it through my property. That's totally fine. And what's your address again, uh, Ms. Palladino? Uh, 29, 29 Land Ave. So if you just go back at my car, there's a um, path right there. Good, thank you. Any other comments? So uh, we'll go first then to the uh, Turkey Hill Road Certificate of Compliance. Um, Switch screens here so I can look at. Sarah, you want to do a, a brief summary, or do we have someone here representing that? We, I don't anticipate anyone will probably come from for any of these or, since they're all fairly straightforward. So Turkey Hill Road uh, was part of a, a larger parcel initially, and then several lots were, were carved out. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually, this is the one that the commission voted on the um, 
not deciding to exercise the right of first refusal since this was originally intention to be a high-end lot. Yeah. Um, so there were several orders of conditions that related to the larger property. Um, once this was divided, it, it became apparent that that work didn't really apply to this parcel, but it still is showing up on a title search. So yeah. this was filed to allow that to be cleared out. And Mason, you're, I, I see your signature on this from 2001. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember like yesterday. <laughs> I can't remember yesterday, but um, what is is this lot one on the uh, plan, Sarah? Oh, which set of plan? Let's see. You have a long driveway into a huge lot. Yeah, it was intended to be a, a long driveway to a view lot um, that was never constructed, but that's not actually even what the. The order is it actually lot one on the plan here? I believe that it is. That's the only one that has a uh, really narrow frontage and uh, long access to get to the main portion of the lot. Mm -hmm. and so the lot is completely vacant. Um, so basically they're just doing their, their paperwork to clear the title and allow them to record this at the registry. So, um, so we're doing a partial certificate of yeah. It's so we wouldn't want to clear out the entire order of conditions right. because there was a lot of work on the the quarry parcels that was conducted. It just wasn't. It didn't happen on this lot. So the commission would issue a certificate of compliance and reference this this particular lot only. Okay, so we should, would we rule it as uh, an invalid order or as a um, negated? Not, not for the Turkey Hill Road. So this work was completed. It just doesn't apply to this lot. So it's a partial certificate of compliance. I see, so it's partial. And then we'll indicate that this is the only lot that it applies to. Okay, somebody want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And the second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Oh, you got to do a roll call, Sarah, I gather. All right. So, uh, Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Alec? Yes. All right. Thank you. And um, next is the Prospect Woods, Warburton Way. Okay. So, let me get back to that screen. And to summarize this one, this was um, this was a permit for some drainage work that had been completed. We um, there, there's a vernal pool um, near the the development. They completed this work, I think, last summer, um, but they weren't able to complete the wetland assessment at that time. So that that's been done. Um, so I did a site inspection. It looks like everything was done in accordance with the plans. The mm -hmm. wetlands are. What and plants are growing, and they indicated that they're planning to do the street sweeping as required moving forward. And they have an engineer's uh, opinion that it has been substantially uh, consistent with the order. Um, so presumably, uh, your recommendation would be to approve an, uh, a completed um, order of conditions. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, another roll call. Mason? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Alec? Yes. All right, thank you. And last, we have uh, 14 Reservoir Road. Um, this one. There's not any supporting documentation with this one. This work was never started. This property is in exactly the same condition as it was um, when this was filed and no work was ever done. So would we, we would uh, determine that the order was no longer valid? 
Yeah, so the, it's it's termed on the certificate of compliance form to be an invalid order, which means that the work was never begun. Yep. Okay. Do you want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? Mason? Yep. Jack? Yes. Jason? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Alec? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, any uh, staff issued permits uh, these past couple of weeks, Sarah? No, I have nothing else to report. So no other business, anybody else? Uh, just that with Elizabeth leaving, we now have to choose another from among us for the uh, oh right for the community preservation committee. So I hope you all are thinking about that. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, and and how 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 much longer do we have you, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll do it as long as I as you want me to, but uh, I'm leaving town next week, so. Jack, I believe your term goes through June. Okay. So if you're, if you're willing to stay through then, you certainly could. Well, yeah, because the, the precedent has been that if people relocate out of Northampton, they can complete their term before uh, okay. getting off the commission. Okay, well, it, we were going to have Elizabeth accompany you to some uh, uh, CPA meetings, so um, they, you, 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 she would get up to speed. So uh, we will indeed have to give that some thought. Let's uh, put that for discussion on our next uh, agenda. Um, and Sarah, I understand the mayor has already nominated a successor for Elizabeth? Uh, he has, yeah. So that is going to City Council subcommittee now, um, should be completed sometime this fall. Okay, so maybe, maybe we can force this off on the new person, but uh, <laughs> if not, we'll see if uh, any, I, I actually have been to some CPC meetings and it, it is an interesting um, process to be party to. So um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a more formal discussion when we have that on the agenda in advance. Okay, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Oh, wait, is Jen, are you here? Oh, she is. Uh, so Kevin, the, the person that the mayor has um, has recommended ah. is actually in the meeting. Hi, sorry I didn't introduce <laughs> myself at the beginning. Hi, Jen, good to meet you. Nice to um, meet you. And welcome aboard. Um, Thank you. Not quite yet officially, but in the process. Right, I understood. I feel like we're breaking some rules here or something. This is pretty scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the time of COVID, rules are uh, malleable. I like it. I, I would be interested in the Community Preservation Committee, so uh, ah, I can table wow. that. But, uh, right. We don't even have to foist it off on you. <laughs> oh. All that right, that well, good. Then maybe you can, uh, uh, Jack, uh, forward to Jen once she's officially on the commission, uh, the schedule of uh, CPC meetings and so that she can begin to get up to speed. Sure. Great. Great. All right. Well, thank you all. Uh, Sarah, I think you're probably right. We've, we've managed to complete this in less than 15 minutes. That may be our shortest meeting ever. All right. Anything else from anybody? If not, uh, see, do we have uh, an agenda shaping up for uh, uh, the first meeting in October? Uh, we do. It looks like we will have one notice of intent for Hamden Street. That's been percolating for a long time. There was some natural heritage review and some other things that had to get finalized with that one and maybe a few other certificate of compliance requests. Okay. So we will be indeed meeting. Yes, Ms. Khan. Can we expect to hear um, from Ms. Lavalle La before the next meeting, or would we expect that the 39 Landy property would be on the agenda for next meeting, or would, the, would it be in the minutes? How are we, how will we know what happened? I can follow up with you, Diane. Um, I mean, depending on, on what we find, there, it may be an agenda. If there's a violation, like it wouldn't be. 
then it would be on our agenda um, in some form. There, so. there can't be a violation because the building has not the the building has not begun yet. So there can't be a violation. There just has to be a determination, which I totally understand Absolutely. is not right. within your purview. But if there's a chance that that could be deemed that, then I'm just wondering. So you'll be following up with me personally. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Um, and I. And I don't remember who made the comment about um, the significant trees, but that would be directed to the planning board. The so, list. So that's, so the planning board is who would explore whether there would be any changes to the significant tree ordinance. Yeah, and, correct. And is Carolyn Mish the chair of that? I'm uh, she's, the, she's the staff. Yeah. She's the assistant planning director. Does the tree warden have any involvement in that? Sarah? Yes, and because it was deemed a, um, homeowner property then it's called a n r approval approval not required because it's a homeowner that's for splitting the property up they don't they don't have to go through the planning board because there's enough frontage to, and so it's uh by right planning board approval. so, so the significant the tree ordinance is tripped when some sort of zoning relief is needed um, mm -hmm. If there wasn't any zoning relief that was needed, so our approval not required splitting of the lots, then the, that may not be part okay. of the review. For I think that. that's what we would be. But that would be a question for Carolyn. Did the shade tree committee get involved with this? I've contacted them, and you know, they've pretty yeah. much said, "Well, the current rules state that you know this is allowed to happen." Mm. Oh, okay. Well, if it's a jurisdictional resource area uh, based on Sarah's visit, then there's something we can do. If, if, if not, uh, we don't have jurisdiction. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Um, Jen, welcome aboard. And uh, we'll, we'll see everybody in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Sarah.